Hey guys, Sebastian here with another Cardano update. This time we're going over the May 2018 roadmap update. So let's get right down into it. First things first, uh, exchange enhancements has gone up from 80 to 90%. Uh, so this is mostly related to uh, the new API. So they've been working on API v1 and uh, they've been making a lot of progress. They're fi I, I believe they're finalizing it now. They've got a lot of stuff already done. They've been collecting feedback from exchanges, writing documentation for exchanges on how to migrate from V0 to V1. Uh, there's still some tweaking they're doing, fixing some problems. Uh, so it's not done yet, which is why it's only at 90%. Uh, but they've been making a lot of progress on this, and this has been one of the things they've been working on the most in the past few weeks. Uh, next up, we have the uh, Open Orboros delegation, which has stayed 75%, and I'll kind of explain why a bit later. Uh, next up is uh, multi-signature transactions. Uh, so this has uh, stayed at 35%. Uh, but I just wanted to point out that the owner has changed. So it's changed from George Agapov to Ravi Patel. So if you remember, George was part of Cirocal, which has parted ways with IOHK. And as part of this transition, they now have a new uh, project manager in charge of, oops, in charge of uh, this uh, item. Next up is wallet backend that has gone from 60 to 65%. So this is representing, I believe, the, the fact that they're rewriting the wallet uh, backend, uh, which I've explained in a previous video in the technical report, but essentially what's going on is that uh, they're taking the, the old code and moving to a, a new system uh, for ease of testing that allows them to also have a bunch of new uh, safety properties. And what I mean by this is now when you create a wallet, uh, there's gonna be three options. There's gonna be uh, what they call a kernel, which is like the V1 API new wallet, uh, new design. There's gonna be the legacy, which is the old system. And there's gonna be a third one, which is just like a testing wallet. So you have these three kinds of wallets and uh, pair with that is a passive wallet and a, uh, active wallet. So uh, an active wallet is a wallet that's allowed to spend uh, and track the transactions, all this kind of stuff. A passive wallet uh, cannot do any of this. It cannot connect to the network per se. Uh, so that means whenever you create a wallet, you're gonna have uh, these choices uh, available to you. You could have like a kernel wallet that is passive, kernel wallet that is active, uh, and this allows uh, more choice to the users but what they're trying to do uh, more safety in that way uh, with the v1 API uh, it'll be easier for people to onboard onto uh, Cardano and make more uh, third-party systems that use it for example exchanges and uh, with the way that they're writing the new wallet, it's meant to be uh, more specification driven. So they have an entire uh, wallet specification that they've been working on for quite a while now. And uh, it's more mathematical driven, if you will, in the sense that uh, they specify all the properties of how the wallet should function in theory and build their implementation based on the specification. And uh, this should uh, make the code cleaner, hopefully make it more efficient, and also it will make it much easier to test uh, that it's working correctly. So this is kind of what the wall backend is, and this is like a very large task, which is why it's only gone up 5% despite all the work they've done. And also I feel like, uh, I'm not sure if they can ever reach like 100%, like we're done the wall backend. I mean like uh, every coin you can imagine, they're always like, tweaking the back end every now and then. So I'm not sure you can ever reach 100%, which is like a thing where like moving forward, moving forward forever, basically. Uh, so that, that's it. Uh, next up is consensus incentive and fees. So this one has moved up from 70 to 8%. So if you're uh, wanting to know what's happening with the uh, delegation, this is mostly what I think you should be looking at. And what I mean by that is that the code for the delegation is mostly there as far as I can tell. What's missing is just this paper on incentives, how the incentives are gonna work, uh, how are they gonna promote, uh, you know, 
how are they going to avoid like an oligarchy basically of like a you know a few small pools that everybody's using all those kind of incentives uh so this is kind of you know what this is trying to solve and they have a paper on this topic that they've been writing for quite a while now uh that we're hoping to see probably you know halfway through the month something of the sort uh that will lay out kind of the incentive structure and the, once that paper is out everybody will be able to read it uh peer review it give their thoughts all this kind of stuff uh so before we do the delegation and all this kind of stuff we have to figure out essentially what the incentive model is going to be and if it's an effective incentive model. Next up is uh, quantum resistance signature. So I just want to say this one also changed from George Jaravi, but the progress is still the same. Uh, next up is uh, like client support. So this one has stayed at 20%, but they move, they, they've done some progress on this in the sense that they've done some uh, discussion as to how they would approach the like client. They've done some uh, preemptive testing, I believe, for how uh, you could have a web wallet. So they have a team right now at OHKS trying to do web wallets. Uh, and so they like this is kind of similar in a sense. Uh, so there's, there's like some progress on this, uh, but maybe not the highest priority right now. It's more like uh, they're working on this in the background as they're trying to do other stuff. Next up, uh, human friendly addresses. This has gone up from 20 to 30%. I'm not sure what has made this go up. I don't think there's any code related to this that has been made necessarily, uh, but it's advanced regardless. Uh, networking has gone up from 50% So they've done a fair amount of work on this, uh, which is mostly like a benchmarking work. So in the past month, They've been uh, testing a lot of features that they've been wanting to have, such as block streaming, HTTP syncing, all this kind of like a uh, faster syncing of, of the network. And they've been doing a lot of benchmarks on this. And I think this is what this represents, this 5% uh, increase. Paper wallets uh, has gone from 33% to 85%. So you might be wondering, uh, why is it not 100% right? So code wise, the paper wallets have been done. You can go on the GitHub repository right now and see the paper wallets and like, if you want, you can download uh, the latest branch and actually get your paper wallet. Uh, but they're still doing testing for it, right? So they had an initial round of testing and they found an issue, I believe. So then they fixed that issue. Now they're on release uh, at candidate number two with the fixed issue. Uh, and now they're doing more testing to just make sure everything works correctly, not just on the paper wallet, but just the next release. Uh, so last we heard the next release of, uh, Daedalus along with the settlement layer will be about halfway through the month. So you would expect that, uh, halfway through the month, uh, we're going to get the new version of the wallet, which will contain the paper wallet feature, uh, unless they, they find some other issue. But so that's kind of why there's like a 15% remaining. That's just like the testing and like this bug they found and fixing it and all this kind of stuff. Uh, next up is uh, Daedalus wallet accounts. So this one's like kind of strange because uh, Daedalus has supported a concept of accounts for a long time, uh, but only in the API, right? There's no way as far as I know from the actual UI to handle accounts. And now suddenly they're talking about like day Dillis wallet accounts and like a 20% and I'm not sure where this 20% came from. So there's two things I think it could be. So the first one is just they're trying to expose the concept of accounts that exist in the API in the UI, right? And the reason they would do this is because uh, ledger support for the hardware wallets, uh, usually I believe in their standard interface, uh, they allow you to specify accounts or at least they have this for Bitcoin. And so to kind of match the interface of the hardware wallet for like Bitcoin, or whatever, uh, they may have also wanted to expose this concept of accounts uh, to everybody in the uh, Daedalus uh, wallet. So it could be one thing. Uh, the other thing I could possibly imagine is that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can now have like a passive uh, wallets, active wallets, 
and uh, I'm not sure if they're going to try and like uh, merge this concept into account. So the way it works right now is like your entire wallet is either passive or active, and uh, any account this wallet creates is like fixed. So if the wallet is active, then all the accounts it creates, I believe, will also be active. Uh, and I'm not sure if they can like mix and match those, and that may be what they're trying to do with this. Uh, but it's more likely probably that this is related to the uh, HD wallets trying to get the accounts that already exist in the API uh, visible in the UI. Next up is release strategy. So this one has like no update, but I just wanted to note that uh, there used to be a progress bar for this and now the progress bar is gone. I'm not sure if that's a bug or if it's intended. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, this is just uh, they're trying to get on a monthly shipping cycle. So right now the new version of uh, Daedalus just ships like uh, whenever they're ready basically but they're trying to get on a like a more strict uh, monthly release cycle something they've been working on next up is a staking pool registration so they've actually extended the staking pool registration up to May 31st right and they've also mentioned in another uh, blog somewhere that they had uh, 15,000 people uh, sign up for this right and uh I think, I mean, they, they make it sound like it's a very good thing. I think it's kind of maybe not a good thing because if you look at the staking pool registration, like it, it's not very clear how they're going to filter this down to figure out who should be part of this staking uh, pool testnet, right? And it's not clear from the forum that actually there's no advantage to being part of the staking pool testnet. You're basically volunteering your, your time to help IOHK. And it's not practically clear that they like what kind of technical background they want, if, how much commitment uh, you have to prove that you have to the project to be part of this. Any kind of like a way to filter it down other than just like these uh, simple uh, checkboxes. So I'm not sure how they're going to uh, figure out how to filter all the candidates they've had uh, down to like a small set selection. So I think they said they wanted like a 50 to 100 people to test with. Uh, and I'm not sure how that's going to happen. So maybe they just end up like uh, picking at random people in the pool. Like, you know, I'm not sure how they're going to deal with this. Uh, but you know, I, I think if they made this registration like a uh, more clear, like what kind of people they're looking for, they would not have all these people that are like a signing up just because like a fear of missing out on the test net, right? Uh, but anyways, we'll see what they do. Next up is the uh, Ledger wallet, which has gone from 33% uh, to 50%. And so this is representing uh, the fact that actually they merged into the Ledger code base uh, code to support uh, ADA. So they're still working on this Ledger wallet support, uh, but they made some good progress. So you can go check out the code if you want uh, for how to connect to from the Ledger wallet uh, to uh, Cardano, basically. Uh, but there's still like work to be done uh, on this front, especially because we don't have like light client support and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so we'll see how this advances from here. Uh, but this is done like on a partnership basis. So you might notice like uh, this is uh, uh, by the Cardano Foundation. So this is not done by OHK. Uh, so the Cardano Foundation is the one that's handling the Ledger wallet. And they're like uh, contracting this out to some other companies also uh, to work on this. So we'll see how much uh, progress gets made on this front. Uh, but it's harder to follow because like it's not like IOHK is working on this. It's like a bunch of different people from a bunch of different companies. Uh, working on this. Uh, next up, side chains. So side chains has gone up from fifty to seventy-five percent. Uh, I believe they've said they have a paper on this topic uh, that they've been working on. They've been trying to get out. So this probably uh, this twenty-five percent probably represents mostly work on this paper as opposed to any code. I don't think there's been any uh, new additional code for side chains released. Uh, similarly, the accounting model has gone up from 50-60%. And I think this is also just work on the paper. So they put out a paper uh, last month, I believe, called like uh, Chimeric Ledgers, which is about uh, kind of this accounting model. 
and they're still like uh, doing work uh, research on this. So I think that's like most of the time percent represents. Next up, we have the multi-currency ledger. So this is like a Daedalus feature. So you might have heard that now there's like a, the Mantis client which supports uh, Ethereum Classic all in the same uh, wallet. And uh, from day one, they've wanted to get like a Bitcoin support into the wallet and they've also wanted to get, I believe, just regular Ethereum support also. I don't remember if that one was included. But they had, they had like some list of uh, other currencies they want to support. And I mean, the future is no reason it can't support like a larger array of uh, currencies that exist. Uh, so that's basically uh, what they're working on. And I think this will probably tie in with the side chains and all the different uh, layers uh, that will exist uh, in the Cardano network. So for example, like if you don't know, uh, the competition layer where smart contracts will run will be a side chain in a sense of the actual network, the uh, settlement layer. Uh, so in a sense, this is also related to all of that. Plutus core has gone up uh, from 12% to 14%. It's kind of hard to say like what this 2% represents. Uh, I don't think they have put out anything in particular recently. Uh, other than just like code. Uh, so I'm not sure how they're measuring like 2% game, but anyways, it's gone up. Next time, uh, next up is the IELE uh, virtual machine. So this has gone up from uh, 50% to 75%. And they also announced the uh, testnet is going to uh, be up. I believe this one was... Uh, yeah, May. Oh yeah, so the KEVM will be May twentieth, but then the ILE virtual machine will be launched in uh, July, right? So they mentioned uh, in technical updates, they've been working on getting the AWS set up uh, for this test net and all this kind of stuff. So I think uh, mostly from here, they're working on uh, test net integration and getting all of that figured out. Uh, as far as integration into the actual protocol, right, that has not changed. So this is still at 50%, 15%. So mostly like the virtual machine and the testnet uh, have done, have been worked on a lot. The actual integration of the protocol has like a stay at 15%. And uh, lastly is the Gogwin testnet launch. Uh, we're here, they, it's, it's updated, but essentially what they're updating is uh, not the progress bar, but it's just saying that now they have like uh, these more concrete release dates as to when this will come out. Uh, lastly, uh, there's the voting center that has been interesting, interestingly enough, uh, moved from Shelly to Basho. So it used to be like a somewhere up in Shelly that will have these voting centers, but it's been moved down to Basho. And I'm not sure what was the rationale to moving it down. Maybe it's just not a priority for now. Uh, there's been no official statement on this, uh, but just be aware that they, they used to be uh, coming earlier, but now they've pushed it back. And that's it for this update. There's going to be another update in 34 days. So hopefully at that point, we'll go through it together and I'll help kind of break it down for you. If this video is helpful for you, uh, please subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter, all this kind of good stuff. I make uh, regular videos about Cardano progress on the project and uh, all this kind of stuff. So if you're interested, uh, yeah, just follow progress with me and I hope I'll see you guys in the next video.